I'm Jan Zimmerman, author of Hermeneutics, a very short introduction, and here are 10 things you should know about hermeneutics. First, where the word comes from. Hermeneutics can be a bit of a conversation stopper, so it's good to know where the term originates. The word comes from an ancient Greek term, hermenoiain, which was later translated into the Latin interpretari, which is why we're so much more familiar with the idea of interpretation. But hermeneutics and interpretation mean the same thing, to say or utter, to explain, to translate. Two, what the term signifies today. Today hermeneutics has come to mean two things, an activity and a branch of philosophy. As an activity, hermeneutics describes any effort at understanding written or verbal communications and establishing proper rules for their interpretation. As a branch of philosophy, hermeneutics goes deeper than that at the very nature of understanding as such. So for example, hermeneutic philosophers will study how our language, our native languages, or our traditions condition how we understand not just texts, but life as a whole. Third, the nature of perception. Hermeneutics shows us that we don't actually perceive the world by seeing first objects and then clothing them with meaning afterwards. Rather, every act of seeing is putting the world together in a certain way, based on our own personal history and cultural tradition. Even our professions make us see the world in certain ways. So physicists, for example, will tend to look at the world in terms of quantifiable objects, causality, and mathematics. Four, knowledge is interest-driven. We in Western culture have been conditioned to think of knowledge, of objective knowledge, as something neutral and disinterested. Hermeneutic thinkers have shown the contrary. Actually, every pursuit of knowledge, whether in the sciences or in the humanities, is based on personal commitment, creative imagination, and passion. Five, fusion of horizons. This central hermeneutic term describes the nature of understanding as integrating what is unfamiliar to us into our own familiar context. So when we understand something, we, we fuse someone else's viewpoint with our own. And in this encounter, we are transformed because it broadens our mind. Six, tradition is a good thing. Western culture has been conditioned to think ever since the Enlightenment that tradition is the opposite of critical thinking, where in reality, tradition is crucial by giving us the first initial tools of discovery and by teaching us what's actually worth knowing. So we don't want to be stuck in tradition, but we need to recognize its proper role for inter interpretation. Seven, the power of language. Hermeneutics has shown us that language is actually not a tool we use at will, but that words, symbols, and concepts are the very medium within, within which our thoughts take shape. Eight, the hermeneutic circle. Even people who don't know a lot about hermeneutics have heard about the hermeneutic circle. What does circle mean? Does it mean that interpretation is like a dog chasing its own tail? No, it simply describes that all understanding is context dependent. Nine, hermeneutics is not relativism. Perhaps the most common misconception about hermeneutics is that its insistence on the interpretive nature of all knowledge destroys objectivity. But hermeneutics is not relativism. To say that interpretation means we can see the world in many different ways doesn't mean we simply make up the world. Hermeneutics is not relativism but a critical realism for which personal involvement is essential to how we understand things. So we don't construct the world but the world discloses itself to us based on our angle of vision. Finally, 10. Hermeneutics is an antidote to fundamentalism. Fundamentalism is essentially the inability to recognize that even our most deeply felt convictions are mediated through language, tradition, and history. In this sense, not only religious folks, but also scientists or atheists can fall into relativism.